The most common theory about nuclear disarmament is that nuclear disarmament is good in theory. In practice, of course, nuclear disarmament is often seen as a pipe dream. Now, this uh, goes very nicely with traditional international relations theory, which says that essentially human nature is, insert appropriate expletive here, and as a result, we should expect the spread of nuclear weapons and not nuclear disarmament or people getting rid of nuclear weapons. So why on earth would a small country put a lot of political capital into promoting nuclear disarmament? And really, what good does it do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lyndon Burford, and in the next 150 seconds, I will give you the why, what, and how of my research into this topic for a PhD in political studies here at the University of Auckland. So why study nuclear disarmament? Well, in the 1980s, when New Zealand became nuclear free, we were shunned by the entire Western world. When France blew up the Rainbow Warrior in Auckland Harbour, none of New Zealand's friends or allies even acknowledged the incident. However, in the last 25 years, the world has moved a lot closer to New Zealand's position than the other way around. To the extent that the United States president is now one of the world's leading cheerleaders for nuclear disarmament. So the issue is back on the international agenda and it's being taken seriously. So what will I be studying exactly? Well, I'll be looking at three countries that don't have nuclear weapons, but do have strong policies promoting nuclear disarmament. I'll be looking at why, how, and with what results they do this. My three case study countries are Norway, a nuclear weapons ally through its membership in NATO, New Zealand, a self-declared nuclear weapon-free zone, and Mexico, host of the world's first ever regional nuclear weapon-free zone. Now, how will I be conducting this research? Well, I'll be carrying out field research in my three case study countries. I'll be conducting interviews with governmental, non-governmental, and academic experts. And I'll be applying a constructivist theoretical framework, which is to say, rather than simply focusing on material factors such as military strength or the economy, I'll be looking at how the international social environment affects the behavior of states. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this research is vitally important for two key reasons. First, because it is novel. Now, the international community has set the goal of eliminating nuclear weapons, but most scholars in this field tend to study why states build nuclear weapons, not why they get rid of them. Secondly, it's important because of its relevance to today's world. In the post 9-11 world, there is a growing consensus on the need for nuclear disarmament. Even arch realists such as Henry <laughs> Kissinger now are calling for nuclear disarmament, saying that we desperately need nuclear disarmament in order to ensure international security. My sincere hope is that in some small way, this research will help to contribute to the goal of eliminating nuclear weapons. Sound idealistic? Naive? That's what people were saying about New Zealand 25 years ago.